feel like you're constantly chasing things in life, like grades, career, money, power, influence. Why is that? Because ever since we were born, we've been compared and measured. First, with our height, weight, skin color, looks, making us all a statistic. Then in school, we're compared with our test scores to see our cognitive abilities and as athletes to see our physical abilities. Adulthood brings a whole set of other challenges, money. We measure our careers in terms of money and we our success rate based on that. Our growth has always been measured in a statistical curve and this is how we've learned to identify ourselves. But what if we change the way we see growth? What if we took a whole different perspective and made it more personal? I know it sounds very philosophical when I say, don't compare yourself to somebody else. I mean, how can someone live in a bubble and not see what's going around them and see the people being successful around them and excelling and going places? How can you change your perception about something that has been ingrained in your system since the time you were born? Now, let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you my story. On July 2nd, 2017, my daughter decided to come into the world. I was only seven months pregnant and not ready for her arrival. I had an incompetent cervix, so I was on bed rest for most of my pregnancy. As any new parents, we were very excited and nervous too to welcome her. She came out without much of a fuss. And as soon as she came out, all I could think of was how beautiful she was. I was quite proud of what we had created together. On the other hand though, the hustle bustle in the room completely stopped. The room fell silent. Vivek and I held Nora in our arms for a few seconds before she was rushed into the NICU because she was prematurely born. I remember asking the doctor if everything was okay and he reassuringly gave me a look and said all was well. The next day, I couldn't wait to hold her in my arms and give her skin to skin in the NICU. Just then, the doctor came into the room, looked at her and told us, Nora may have Down syndrome. Now, before I move on to my tragic state of mind, let's talk about Down syndrome. So what is Down syndrome? We all have 23 sets of chromosomes in each cell of our body. In total, we have 46 chromosomes. On the other hand, Nora decided to make her grand entry into our lives, kicking and screaming, adding an extra copy of the 21st chromosome. She has 47 chromosomes. This genetic condition is called Down syndrome. It affects Nora's muscle tone in her entire body, which creates physical and cognitive challenges for Nora. Nora needs more time and months of therapy to achieve the same milestones that kids typically her age, her age achieve effortlessly. Now, getting back to my story. When the doctor told us the diagnosis, I was completely numb, as you can imagine. Everything around me was a complete blur. I felt I was having an outer body experience. I was floating outside reality. I felt a very helpless feeling and I could see my life take a drastic, a drastic turn and I couldn't do anything about it. My mind was incomprehensible. I mean, I had just lost the child of my own dreams to a child with a label. I had so many thoughts running to my head, so many questions with all the limitations that she was born with. What kind of life would she be living? How would she fit into this world? What kind of life would she be able to live with all of these limitations? Would she even have friends? Now when I think of it, it sounds funny, but trust me at that point of time, it all sounded very serious. But all my worries stemmed from a very same perception of how I'd ingrained and visualized myself in front of the world how I saw my success and failures, always in comparison to the world around me. And now that's how I saw my daughter. Fortunately, my husband saw our life in a whole different light. He showed me a whole new perspective. He showed me a world full of people where there are many successful people with Down syndrome living full thriving lives. Well, full lives, thriving lives, and great lives. Better than mine, of course. 
they really, this really helped me overcome my grief and accept Nora for who she was, my child. Well, who also happens to have Down syndrome? Once we had our shift in perspective, there was no looking back. We knew we had to create our own path and we had to help her find hers. Our perception changed from how would Nora fit into this world to how can we help her, empower her to proudly stand up for her differences and break all the stigma surrounding special needs. We started engaging in open conversations with people around us to break the awkwardness that had been surrounding with people with differences. We wanted to change the way people saw differences. We wanted people to ask us questions without hesitation. The only way we were able to express and see the potential in Nora was by throwing out all the current perceptions of growth and success that we had in our mind that was deep rooted within us. We had to change our frame of reference. That, that introduced us to a whole new world of abilities where we saw abilities in a whole new light. This is when we realized that people who do not recognize ability are the ones with the disability. People who focus on limitations are the ones with disability. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Nora has her own village who helps her become able every day. She has an occupational therapist that helps her with the fine and gross motor skills, a speech therapist that helps her with speech, language, and communication. Her school that gives her a very inclusive environment for her to thrive amongst her peers. She has family and friends who dote on her and give her special privilege only to spoil her. She lives a very full life and she lives a very privileged life because of the village who sees Nora for who she is. Our normal is not your normal. But again, normal is such a relative term for each individual, no? One man's life is another man's struggle. I realized this when I would watch Nora at therapy months on end trying to achieve her milestones that came so effortlessly and naturally to neurotypical kids her age. It would bother me to see her struggle with each step, but she always finished therapy with a smile on her face. What I felt was a struggle was a way of life for her. She didn't see that as struggle. That was her normal. She didn't see her life as a struggle. She failed a million times, months on end, before she finally achieved her milestones but she didn't see them as failures. That is what Nora taught me. There is no one single perspective in life. You choose how you want to see your life. You choose how you want to see your failures. You choose how you want to see your success and growth. You choose your own happiness. My child, who I thought came with so many limitations, literally showed me how I was chained to my own. She helped me break barriers and changed my life. My success and failures no longer were a part of a statistic because now they were my own. I proudly stand and advocate for Nora in the hopes to change the narrative around people with differences. I want to share a little incident that happened a while ago. I met a young lady and I, when I took Nora to her pediatrician's office. She was sitting with her mother and two children looking really worried. I decided to sit there next to her and wait for our turn. While she and I waited, eventually we got talking and I could see myself in her. As we exchanged small talk, tears started rolling down her eyes. And I understood exactly why she was unable to get a hold of her emotions. Her seven-month-old daughter had Down syndrome. And I could tell by looking at those gorgeous almond-shaped eyes. So I decided to talk about Nora and list all her achievements. In the midst of that, she started bawling because she envied that her child with Down syndrome would never be able to achieve all this. She told me that I was lucky and I did not know what it feels like to be a mother of a child with special needs and that I should be grateful and count my blessings for not knowing and being in her shoes. That's when I told her that the child that she was envying is just like yours. Nora also had Down syndrome. But I chose not to label her before listing her abilities. She was speechless. She had never perceived her daughter more than her diagnosis. Nora's life is a perfect example of how a shift in perspective can change your life. 
the magic of Nora's extra chromosome educated me on that important life lesson. Nora's three and a half years old now. She started walking at two, talking at almost three, and is still learning to communicate. She worked on learning how to walk for a year before she could learn to walk independently. She's the child who learned to dance before she learned to walk. She was learning to speak since she was a year old before she finally said her first words when she was two and a half. She's the, she's the child who learned to sign and sing with her hands before she learned to speak. She is the child who raised substantial amount of funds for adults with differences for their vocational training. She is the child who appeared on national television and showed off her encyclopedic knowledge, all before the age of two. She is the child who's model for many Indian brands. She is the child who represented India at a global magazine for diversity. She is the child who was enlisted as one of the people who gave hope in 2020 by midday. She is the child who woke India chose to showcase in their magazine in Jan 2021. I believe there's nothing heroic or courageous about advocating for special needs, but there's something very, very purposeful and meaningful about it. It has added a sense of gratitude in my life. It has made me see opportunities that were in front of me the whole time, but I never recognized them. It has made me appreciate small moments in life rather than just focus on the bigger picture. It is the little things leading up to the biggest victories and failures that matter the most because in those moments, we learn how capable we are to cross our own mountain. We may not reach there the first time around, but we learn the strength we have with each step we climb. I started off this journey wanting Nora to fit in and teach her how to interact with others in the society in the hopes that she would integrate with everyone. But I want to end this journey by teaching those without differences how to interact with them to accept them for who they are and unconditionally love them and create an ecosystem where we can coexist together with empathy and love. It may take me a lifetime to create these ripples of change, but change starts with one person at a time, and that change can begin with you and me.